Sticking with good habits can be a real challenge sometimes, but once habits do settle in, they tend to kind of benefit us forever. So today I wanted to chat about how we can turn our good intentions into lasting habits. Habits are a very clever trick of the brain to help us save energy by automating tasks. It's kind of the reason why we look both left and right before we cross the street and why we lock up the door behind us when we leave or why we brush our teeth just before we go to bed. These are things that we usually don't even notice that we're doing because when habits are really entrenched, it lets us live a large part of our lives on autopilot and that frees up so much mental energy for all these other things that we can do instead. But if you ever tried implementing a new habit, you might realize it's really hard to make it stick. So today I wanted to chat about some tools and techniques that we can use to make sure that we implement our habits in an effective and sustainable way. And a lot of the inspiration that we're going to be sharing in today's video came from an excellent audiobook called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And before we begin, I do want to thank Audible for partnering with us on today's video, but we're going to chat more about them at the end. For now, let's get started on building some habits. The actions that we perform as part of our habits tend to be pretty small, but because we repeat them over and over again, their effect really adds up, and so it can have a really profound impact on our lives. Like let's say, for example, that we get in the habit of cleaning up our desk once we're done working for the day. This might set us up for starting the next day free of any distractions, and then as a result, we might be slightly more productive the next day. And even though the immediate effect might seem super small, or maybe even just insignificant, if we do this every single day over the course of a year, it could mean a huge productivity boost. On the flip side, a messy desk full of distractions might decrease our productivity when looking back over the long term. This is kind of why it's so important to make sure that we set up our habits for success, because then we can just let time do all of the hard work for us. There's a quote in the book that I really liked where James said, good habits make time your ally, bad habits make time your enemy. I think we're usually either told or we feel like we have to come up with these really big goals for ourselves, like saying, I want to run a half marathon by the end of the year. And if we focus on outcomes like this, I think we, we do tend to sometimes get temporary achievements, which is great, and that might tick the box. But if we actually want to fundamentally change our behavior, it's more effective if we focus on our desired identity instead, like saying, I want to become a great runner. Once we've decided what kind of person we want to be, we can then start building the habits that form this identity. And to know what those habits are, we just kind of need to ask ourselves, like, what would this person do? What would a great runner do? We might come up with things, aside from running frequently, things like a good runner would probably eat well or implement a recovery routine or stretch frequently. And then once we've established what identity forming habits we want to implement, it's really important to make sure that we repeat these habits over and over and over again. And to do this, we can implement the following five techniques. When we want to get a good habit off the ground, it is really important that we are specific in our intentions. So this includes knowing the where, the when, the how often, and these are things that we can write down. But another strategy that I also find really helps and works is if we pair the new habit we want to build with an existing habit, something we already do. So for example, when I wanted to start to make a habit out of journaling, I told myself that I'd do it every evening at my desk after I had brushed my teeth. And so by linking the new habit of journaling with my existing habit, which was brushing my teeth, it made the time and place very specific. And that made it a lot easier for me to follow up on my intentions. To make sure that we even want to implement a new habit, I think we need to make sure the experience is as pleasurable as possible. And at the end of the day, I usually feel like our mindset is what determines whether or not we're gonna enjoy something. I think a really powerful way to create a positive mindset is just by using some positive language in our internal dialogue. So let's say the habit we want to build is to make meals at home more often. Instead of saying, I have to make a home cooked meal tonight, we can just take that word have and switch it with get. So then we would be saying, I get to make a home cooked meal tonight. I get to experiment in the kitchen. I get to nourish myself. So even though the action that we're gonna be performing in both scenarios is exactly the same, it's that shift in mindset that makes all the difference in how pleasurable the experience is going to be. 
To make sure that we don't drop out before a habit even has time to settle in, we want to get rid of any obstacles standing in the way of us repeating that particular habit. So let's say, for example, we want to become great photographers. One of the obstacles might be that the battery is always dead. So in this case, we can make sure to charge it before we head out, or maybe putting it by the door so that we remember to take it with us. And then once the obstacles are out of the way, we want to make sure that the habit itself isn't the obstacle. And you know that our philosophy is to try to make things simple, short, and sweet. Because if we make things more complicated than we need to, that can be an obstacle in and of itself. So instead of trying to learn all the camera settings, for example, in one go, which is something I personally tried doing and it was incredibly overwhelming, we could instead play around with just a single camera setting every time we go out with it. It's so much more effective to perform a small action often rather than a perfect action sometimes. If we can reward ourselves right after we do our desired habit or action, the chances of repeating it are going to be way higher. Because new habits, they tend to reward later and they might not usually feel so good in the moment. Whereas with bad habits, they tend to feel really good in the moment, but eventually we pay a price for them. So by rewarding ourselves directly at the end of our new habit, we're reinforcing the behavior that we want. This is a concept I kind of played around with a little bit to get in the habit of exercising more often by ending my workouts with a nice long stretching session while I was listening to some music that just made me feel super happy. And it was that kind of blissful moment at the end of a workout that made me look forward to doing it again the next time. Eventually, I feel like habits become intrinsically rewarding, especially once the long-term benefits start showing. But until we get to that point, I think having a little bit of external reward can really help to make sure we keep at it. Our environment plays a huge role in the formation of our habits. Like if we watch TV on the couch, but then we try to pick up a new reading habit and we also want to do that on the couch, it might prove to be a little bit difficult sometimes because it can be distracting, but if we were to instead try to read in a different spot altogether, then over time, this new spot becomes associated with the new habit, which can then make it easier for us to get into the flow of reading every single time we sit there. And then aside from picking a good location for building a new habit, it's also really important to make sure that we surround ourselves with the right kind of people, whether in person or digitally, because it's human nature to kind of adjust our behavior to fit in with a crowd or the people that we surround ourselves with. And so if our desired habits are the norm for our surroundings, then adopting those habits become a lot easier. So all in all, habits are very, very powerful because their effects tend to add up over time. And we can actively shape our habits by making sure that we repeat them again and again. And to make sure that we keep at it, it really helps if we can be very specific about our intentions, if we can adopt a positive mindset, if we remove any obstacles, make our habits short and simple so that we can follow through with it. We wanna reward ourselves at the end and set up our environment for success and then we can let time do the rest of the work for us. And if you are interested in learning more about building a solid foundation and framework for good habits, I highly recommend the audiobook Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's an audiobook that Robin and I actually listened to together and we found the examples he gives throughout to really help cement every strategy that he gives. And now anytime Robin says something like, I have to do something, I always chime in and say, I get to. Or anytime I'm not following through on a habit because I do tend to make it more difficult for myself than it needs to be. He's always reminding me to scale it down and make it a little bit easier. So if you think you might be interested in giving the book a listen, you can visit audible.com forward slash pickup lines or check out the link in the description box below to get a 30 day free trial plus any audiobook of your choosing completely for free. And if you are already an existing member, Audible actually while we're at home wants to give its existing members more content to enjoy. So you can access now the entire Audible Originals monthly selection as opposed to just getting access Access to two of them. But I think that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's also actually a free downloadable PDF that we created to just guide you along on building any new habit that you wanted to implement. So check out the link in the description box for that. If you did enjoy today's video, it always means a lot when you take a second to give it a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching. Pick Up Limes signing off. We'll see you in the next video. Welcome to the smoothie making course. Begin. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's really good. I like it. Should I get my mustache covered? No. <laughs> that doesn't look good at all. Ew. <sighs>
to make sure, to make sure, <clears throat> start on um, ba, 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 ba. new, new good habits tend to feel great in the moment, but not, 